Good morning. I'm just kidding. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Bloody Drink. And today I am reviewing something quite special. I say that almost every time I do. But this is something quite special. It's novelty special, actually. What I'm filming today is the Rare Malt Edition by Diageo. Tininic or Chininic. Tininic, Chininic. 23 year old by Diageo. So I'll tell you something about these and why it's quite special. For one, it was bottled in 1997, distilled in 1973. So if you think about it, this was distilled almost just shy of 50 years ago. That's pretty cool. This was distilled shy of 50 years ago, which means really it's quite an old style because in 50 years, half a century, a lot has and would have changed in the processes of barrel selection, barrel storage, even distilling, malting, everything. Um, and over time, yeah, you just don't get that kind of old-fashioned whiskies anymore. Um, and so getting us a blast from the past, it's pretty exciting when it comes to this. And Rare Malts has become a bit of a legend, um, a bit of a um, you know, cult following. You fight for them in auction, you can't just buy them in the shops anymore. Well, you can, but not many shops will stock them because of the price. And this particular one, very excited to review. Tinanik. A little background on Chinenik is that it's um, it's actually one of the main ingredients used in Red Label Johnny Walker. So if you know of Red Label Johnny Walker, um, I'm sorry if you've ever tasted it. It is a horrendous whiskey. It is usually mixed in um, Coke or mixes. Um, and I think as of late, it's not even called whiskey anymore. It's export liquor because it's so young and fiery. But this is not. This is a 23-year-old single malt by Chinenik and that makes it quite a bit special because they don't release their own bottling. So let's get nosing and let's get tasting. Twenty years or so in the bottle. I'm getting a slight um I'm getting a slight bottle smell from there, the OBE, old bottle effect, not too much but slight minerality. But you'll only recognize that if you've tried bottles of whiskey that have been in the bottle for a long time, about 15 to 25 years, then you'll get yourself that old bottle effect. To put it in perspective, it's like a light bulb, a hot light bulb, that's what it smells like, a glass, that glass smell. But in saying that, on the nose, I'm getting quite a distinctly clean nose. Almost too clean. Vanillin. Sickly coconut. I'm guessing it is a bourbon cask. I have not looked. White pepper. A bit of ginger spice. Candy ginger. White sugar syrup. Slightly, slightly sickly floral smell. Can't put my finger on it. I'll go back to it if I can. I'm getting a green pine resin in there. And as cliche as it sounds, wet grass has been freshly cut. You know, like morning dew, you mow the lawn. That slight smell of that grass. It's got a chalky texture to the nose. Like when I say chalky, like slightly drying on the nose. Mm. Oh, I can notice this all day. Also because it's novelty. I mean, I will admit I'm slightly aroused. Don't hold that against me. I'm getting a little bit of honey water. A little citrus in there as well. I'm getting a slight hint of lemon peel juice, under the rind juice, the oil from the lemon peel. And stones. Dry hot stones, that's what I'm getting. And I, I don't know if this is the case, but 
look I can't yeah it's really hard I mean I'm getting like a freshly tanned leather in there I'm getting definitely leather in there but I'm also getting a hint of soot a lot of soot not peat but more smoky soot like when you've got a candle and it's um, got that little cover on it and then that metal, that soot coming from that metal, I'm getting that soot. Let's get tasting. Mmm, definitely citrus. Mmm, citrus, citrus, citrus bites straight away. But the alcohol itself is not too tough. It's not too fiery at all. 57.1, actually not too fiery at all. Citrus, it's not overly oily. It is well textured. Definitely leather. And I'm definitely getting some OBE in there, some old bottle effect. Which apparently some people can, can't taste. But I can taste it a lot because I, I mean, as, a young as a young teenager, I used to burn a lot of bottles for fun. And so I can smell that glass. I know that smell. Mm. Mm. It is quite a robust flavour, but I wouldn't say it's overtly complex. It is quite a strong flavour, not overtly complex. It's got some sweetness, a little bit of sour, but from the citrus and lemon rind in there. It sticks around for a while in the mouth. It does, um, it really does stick around. But the finish is not overly long, but it is definitely on the long side. Most, mostly long compared to your average. Um, but no, it's not as robust as I hoped it would be, but it is definitely a robust whiskey. I can't point that sweetness. What is that sweetness I'm getting? Another thing I'm noticing from it, old fabric like a, an old Persian rug um, or like you know you're, you open up a chest in the house that hasn't been opened for a while and there's some old blankets in there that's been there for a while that dusty book smell this definitely has a dusty taste and nose when you when you drink it and that sourness just bite in the back of the mouth which is the lemon rind that I'm talking about citrus um, it's a delicious whiskey but I mean I probably would not launch a thousand ships to invade a small poorly armed country for it um, nor would I pimp myself out and do dirty deeds for it maybe maybe I would um, but yeah actually I probably would but yeah it's, it's a pretty good whiskey um, but it's not a ridiculously good whiskey um, you'd have to fight for this um, on auction and whether it's worth it or not that's another question it is a damn good whiskey um, delicious whiskey um, but it's just lacking a little bit of finish which is disappointing not sure why but usually the rare malt bottlings i've had so far has been exceptional i like it a lot um i like it a lot don't get me wrong um but the finish i think needs a bit of uh, should have you know can't really improve it but the finish is lacking a little bit cigar pairings for this well it is quite a robust whiskey um i think that um, a good dominican would suit this I did have a Dominican with this the other day and that was delicious well matched strength for strength um, and um, from my memories of that whiskey tasting this was um, this 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 is an excellent whiskey because it progresses as well I didn't have as much today but um, it progresses if you give yourself a bigger pour sip it slowly it does progress with every sip which is really nice you're tasting a little bit more here a little bit more there I'm getting a lot of that soot I'm getting a lot of that um, lemon rind slight sweetness um, it is a little herbal um, but yeah look it's a fantastic whiskey it's always a privilege to try something like this it really is and I think um, is it a placebo effect that I love it because it's a rare malt <laughs> probably um, but no I think that it is quite a unique whiskey it is very different quite intriguing and interesting you certainly don't get whiskeys uh, well you don't get many of them at all made recently with that kind of interest factor in them um, that interest factor could be from the bottle effect as well that can sometimes add to the interest factor um, or sometimes can ruin it but in this case I think it's an interest factor on that and it's just a far cry from what a Johnny Walker Red is I mean 
you know, a Johnny Walker Red and this. It's just, yeah, just sad, really, that they even have to make Johnny Walker Red in this world. So until next time, make sure you eat, smoke, drink. And uh, keep eating, smoking and drinking. Cheers.